Hey everyone, a couple of weeks ago I made a memory wire bracelet with a focal bead and I did a tutorial, it's this one here that I'm wearing today and during that video I was wearing this necklace and I asked you if you would be interested in me doing a tutorial on making this one and of course you said yes so that's what we're going to do today if you're new to my channel welcome my name is Carol it's great to see you and if you're returning it's always lovely to have you along so thank you for that before we get started I just have to say if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and like the video ring the bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new content that way it helps my channel grow and then I can continue to bring you uh, more great beading projects so let's get started making this necklace To make this necklace you will need a focal bead and this one is a very pretty glass faceted bead. It's about 20 millimeters by 15 and it's about 8 millimeters thick so it's quite a flat bead and will sit nice and closely to your chest which I like when I'm making necklaces with a focal bead. I've got a barrel bead. This one is about 8 centimeters, has a loop on the top. We have five of these 10 millimeter faceted glass beads. I have 31 of these acrylic bicones. These are purple and with an AB finish so they sparkle in the light. I also have 31 of these 6mm bicone, uh, hematite bicones. Now I've got some small things here. I've got two little wee crimp beads in black, although the colour doesn't matter, you won't see them. I've got two of these clamps. Now these are called lots of different things by many different people. We call them carlot clamps. They're also called charlotte clamps, some people call them bead caps, which they're not. Some people call them bead ends, some people call them clamshells. So lots of different names, but they all mean the same thing. Basically, they cover the crimp and the closure of your necklace. I've also got here a toggle clasp. This one is black. I have here one five centimetre head pin. I've got about 15 centimetres of 20 gauge wire and I've got about 60 centimetres of tiger tail. You will also need some tools and you will need some flush cutters. You will probably need some chain nose pliers, in fact you will. And I am using my one step looper to make the loops on the focal part of the, be uh, of the necklace. However, if you don't have one step loopers, you could also use a pair of round nose pliers. Now, if you haven't seen my video on how to make a simple loop, then I suggest you go and do that. Uh, I'll leave a link for you. And that shows you how to make a loop with using the round nose pliers. The reason I love these one step loopers is that my loops, firstly they're really quick and easy to use, but my loops are the same size every single time. All right, now we can get started. The first thing we're going to do is make this part of the necklace. So we're going to make this little drop on the end first using our head pin, and then we're going to make this part and attach it to the barrel bead. So let's do that. To do that we start with the head pin, and we add on one of the bicones, the acrylic bicones, and then one of the hematite bicones. And that is all that the dangle is made of. So next we're going to use the one step looper or make a loop and just make a loop in the end of that little piece. Now you'll notice that my loop isn't closed properly, that's fine because I'm going to attach it to another loop in a minute anyway. So I'm just going to pop that there and I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to make a loop in the end of that. There's my loop and this time I'm going to thread on one of my 10 millimeter beads and my focal bead. Just like that. And now I'm going to make a loop in the other end. This one step looper makes it so quick and easy. I know I rabbit on about it a lot, but it does. <laughs> I just love it. All right. That's what I have now. 
Okay, so we're going to join the two components together and remember I hadn't closed the loop so I'm just going to pop that on there and I'm going to use my chain nose pliers to hold the loop on the side and wiggle it closed. Now to wiggle it closed I'm actually moving up and down and pushing in with a little bit of pressure, hopefully you can see that, till the loop comes closed and I'm just going to double check that this one is closed as well. Always good to just double check and make sure that there's a real connection there. Right. So there's the focal component of the necklace. Wasn't that quick and easy? Next we're going to add it to the barrel bead. So to do that I do need to open my loop at the top which is why I hadn't really closed it and just open it up by twisting my pliers upwards and popping that on and reversing it. So what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the loop on the side like this and just up and down until with a little bit of pressure until it's closed. All right so there's the focal point portion with the barrel bead attached. Super quick, super easy. Now when I'm making a necklace I always start from the centre it just helps me, in my design process, it always helps me to start from the centre because that's the part that is most important because that's the bit that everyone sees. So I'm going to take my tiger tail and I'm just going to untangle it because I've managed to tie it in a knot and I'm going to thread that barrel bead on, just like that. And then I'm going to put one of my large beads on either side, actually two of my large beads on either side. You won't believe how quick and easy this, this brace, uh, necklace is to make. And then the next one, on the, the, the other two on the other side. Right. And just making sure that it, that, that is kind of in the middle of the tiger tail. And there you have the centre portion of the necklace. Super quick, super easy. Next, we're basically going to make the chain part of the necklace. So I'm going to start with a bicone, uh, with an acrylic bicone, just threading that on, and then a hematite bicone. And I'm just going to duplicate that pattern all the way until I have 15 of each on my stringing wire, my tiger tail. All right, now I have 15 of each of the beads on either side. So I've got 15 of the acrylic bicones on this side and 15 of the hematite and the same on the other side. So it is exactly the same length on each side. So now all I have to do, obviously, is finish it off and put the clasp on. I'm going to first put on one of my clamps. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting it through the hole on through the, at the bottom of the clamp there. And I'm threading it up through the middle. Next I'm going to put on the crimp bead. And that crimp bead actually sits right down inside that clamp so you never actually see it. Now I probably attach my clasps a little bit differently from most. What I like to do is I like to thread my tiger tail up through the loop but I also put the link of the clamp through the loop as well. So. Sometimes that can be a little bit tricky to get through. Just going to pop it through there now. And then I'm going to thread my tiger tail back down through the crimp bead and back through the hole at the bottom of the clamp. So that's what it looks like now. And you don't have to put your tiger tail through the loop of the clasp. I just think it gives you that added bit of security, so that's why I do it. Now what I want to do is move everything up nice and closely, close to my clasp, and my clamp has just popped off my clasp, so that's okay. And I want to get my chain nose pliers in there, and I need to squeeze my crimp bead, so I'm getting them right into that, into the middle of that clamp and giving it a good tight squeeze so it's nice and flat. So basically what you're doing with a crimp bead is it's round like this and what you're doing is squeezing it flat. But you want, I'll just use my necklace here as a demo, you want it to be like this so that one side of your tiger tail goes through one side and 
the other piece of the other side. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now um, I'm going to close up my clamp with my chain nose pliers, making sure my crimp bead is going to sit nicely inside there, just gently closing it. And I'm actually going to take my round nose pliers and just squeeze the loop down over my, um, to the top there. Sometimes you can do it with your chain nose pliers and sometimes you need to do your, use your round nose pliers as well. Just giving it a bit of a squeeze, getting it in the right place. It's quite soft, so you will be able to manipulate it a bit, even if, it's, if you've closed it, which is what I'm doing now. So that's what I have. And you can see the tiger tail, the loop of the tiger tail, but I'm not worried about that. Honestly, if someone's looking that closely at the back of your neck, I'd be worried. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. And of course I need to feed, I, I need to repeat that with the other end. First I need to cut it off. So what I normally do is I actually feed my tiger tail back through a couple of my beads. And the reason I do that is it just gives me that extra added level of security that my tiger tail isn't cut off right by my crimp bead. I just prefer it that way. So I'm going to go back through three beads and then holding my uh, good piece out of the way, my, the piece I want to keep, I'm getting in there with my, my cutters and cutting as close to the bottom of the bead as possible, making sure I'm not cutting the, the other piece. And there we go. And you don't need to worry about that little end. You can't even see it, but it will tuck inside the next bead, so you don't need to worry about that. All right, now just make sure your beads are nice and close to the um, to each other, so there's no gaps. And we're basically going to repeat it on the other side. So I'm taking my clamp first and putting it up through the middle. There we go. Through my crimp bead. And the best way to put small beads on is to put them down onto your mat and put your wire through the bead rather than the other way around. Trying to get do this and get it in is really challenging. And then I'm putting it through the loop of my clasp. And back down, oops, it's flying away, through my crimp bead. and through the bottom of the clamp. And this time I'm actually going to go through those three beads before I cut, uh, before I squeeze my crimp because I want everything to be nice and tight. So threading through one, two, and three. And I'm going to pull that so that everything gets to be nice and tight. And I have to adjust that a little bit. You know, that's just the way things work. Playing around with it to make it so it's in the right place. So I've got it nice and firm now, and my crimp bead is sitting right down in there inside of that clamp. So once again, I'm going to take my chain nose pliers. I'm getting in there with them, and I'm actually having a bit of difficulty getting to it, so I'm going to open up my clamp a little bit, and you can absolutely do that and give it a squeeze. Right, and just closing up my clamp. Now, you can see here my clamp, uh, the hook on my clamp is sticking away up, so it's not going to go through that loop yet, so I've just got to fiddle with it to get it right and through there. Now I'm closing that clamp up and just closing up the loop as well. And I just want to make sure it's nice and tightly closed and it's still but it still needs to move. So you don't want to do it so that it's kind of stuck in, in one position. So just fiddling around with it to, to make it 
uh, get it in the right place. And of course the last thing we have to do is cut off this piece of tiger tail. So just pulling it nice and tight. I've got this holding this through my, between my fingers, pulling it nice and tight with my thumb and getting in there with the flush side of my cutters again and cutting it off. So there you go, there's the final necklace. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe to my channel, like the video and ring the bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new projects. Just like to say thank you for watching and have a great day.